Road and War Vista. I was born in the Bronx, New York, in December 1941. I've always felt responsible for World War II. The first thing I remember liking that liked me back was food. I had a bad puberty. It lasted 17 years. I'm a high school graduate. I went to art school. My entrance exam was on a book of matches. I decided to move out of the house when I was 24. My mother still refers to this as the time I ran away from home. Eventually, I ran to Minneapolis, where it's cold, and I figured I'd keep better. Now, give me a hand, will you? Sure. Oh. Thank you. Ooh. Thanks a lot. So, you're, uh, Rhoda? Morgenstern, Rhoda. Uh, and I'm Mary Richards. Uh, hello. Get out of my apartment. <laughs> Rhoda, I don't know all the details, but Phyllis will be back in a while, and well, then we can talk about it. I don't talk to her. And besides, there's no discussion here. This is my apartment. Would I be out in the snow washing the windows of your apartment? No, I did that for my apartment. Would I spend an entire month's salary on brand new carpeting for you? I don't know you. I never saw you before. Mm -hmm. That's for me, I did it. <laughs> then a whole month's salary? The owner's out of town for a few days, but his wife said, what'd you let her in for? Phyllis. Phyllis, I can't take this apartment. She spent a whole month's salary on the new carpeting. Oh, that's old carpeting. It comes with the apartment. You lied to me? You betcha. <laughs> okay, girls. You want me to tell you the truth? I'm going to tell you the truth. This is going to be my apartment! <laughs> All right. I want to tell you why Mary needs this apartment more than you do. Why she's moved here to Minneapolis. No, 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 Shh. no. Tell me. A beautiful romance just blew up in her face. It did not blow up. I made the decision. I was going with someone for a couple of years, and now I'm telling her. <laughs> for two years, through his internship and then his residency at the hospital, Bill let her almost support him. Uh, Phyllis, how about if I asked you very nicely to stop this? For two years, he promised her that the minute he started his practice, they would be married. Oh. Phyllis, uh, would you please stop this? After two long years. <laughs> tell her what he said, Mary. Go ahead. After two long years, he said, why rush into things? <laughs> That's why she's here, Rhoda, to start a new life for herself. That's why she needs this apartment. Compared to my life, that's a Walt Disney movie. <laughs> well, now, if you girls will kindly clear out, I'm going to get back to washing my windows. All right, Mary, you can stay downstairs with us tonight. There's an extra bed in Bess's Okay, room. well, listen, I've got a couple of job interviews to go on, so I'll meet you later. We'll settle this tomorrow, Rhoda. It's already settled, Phyllis. You out. <laughs> You think that I'm some kind of a pushover, don't you? Yeah. Well, then you're in for a little surprise. Because cause if you push me, then I just might have to push back. Hard. <laughs> Come on, you can't carry that off. I know. <laughs> now I'm back in Manhattan. New York, this is your last chance. are getting married tomorrow. Yeah, Mary. Wow. I sure am. You know what I was just thinking about? Of course I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about all the old times, weren't you? They were good times. Wait, everything doesn't seem so great. How about some of those dumb dates? Oh. <laughs> Hi! Hey, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Ah, uh, choo! <laughs> Did you ever have a blind date make a fun of your entrance? Oh, gosh, no. Thieves, <laughs> that's the word. Thieves. Like the last guy. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie the exterminator. He used to pick you up in that van with the picture of the bug lying on his back. Feet up in the air and wreath on his chest. It was disgusting. Oh, Mary, now just... Look, exterminating is, is an honorable profession. Okay, all right. It's not just a job. Rhoda, the man was always asking you to lend him money. Just until termite season. Oh. Uh, <laughs> allow me to introduce myself. I'm another person in the room. <laughs> Morgenstern. Oh, how would I know? How do you do? And this is my date, Mr. and Mrs. Armand. <laughs> you really think I'd make a direct?
derogatory remark about a person just because he's a shrimp? Do you see what I mean? Uh, uh, drugstore's closed, so I guess I'll quit smoking again. Hi. Got a cigarette? Uh, uh, Eric, I'd like you to meet my friend Rhoda Morgenstern. Rhoda, this is Eric Shrimp. <laughs> getting married. He's not my type. What do you mean, he's not your type? He is witty. He is attractive. He's successful. He's single. He's gay. <laughs> no answer, huh? Are you sure you're ringing the right room? Mrs. Lindstrom in 208. Oh, I guess she must be on her way then. No message. Thank you. Carlton, the doorman. Yes, Carlton, this is Rhoda. Now, I'm waiting for a blonde woman, slightly overdressed, a little too much makeup, looking like she's in a hurry. Have you seen anybody like that? Seen them. I kicked three of them out of the lobby last night. <laughs> no, no, Carlton, this is a friend of mine. I'm waiting for her to take me to my wedding. Uh, Carlton, I'll be right back. Hello. Oh, hiya, Brenda. No, I'm completely ready here. It's just that Phyllis is very late. Yeah, is anybody there yet? Uh, standing room only, huh? They weren't going to miss this one, were they? <laughs> no, no. Listen, I'll, uh, I'll call you the minute Phyllis gets here so you know when we're leaving. Yes, yeah, so long. Carlton, you still there? Hello, this is Carlton, the doorman. <laughs> yes, Carlton. Now listen to me, please, carefully. Now, this blonde friend of mine has a dark green car. She might be having trouble finding a parking space. How's the traffic? Uh, traffic? Yep, it's out there. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to come down there and look for her myself. Oh, good. It'll give me a chance to kiss the bride. Carlton, there's a buck in it for you if you keep your hands off the bride. <laughs>
what's new? <laughs> Nothing much. Same here. <laughs> Lawyer, it's nothing important. No, Rhoda, your your face changed when you opened it. No, no, it didn't, Brenda. I, I mean, I, it's nothing. It's no, nothing. I know that look. I know that look. It's the same look we had when we were kids, and we had those two identical ducks. And you came in and told me that my duck died. You remember? It's the same look. Wait a minute. If they were identical, how did you know it was my duck that died? Rhoda. It was your duck, wasn't it? You took my duck. My divorce is final. You switched ducks on me. Boy, what a rotten thing to do. Brenda, I'm telling you that this letter says I am finally divorced. You owe me a duck. <laughs> Get you a duck. Thank you. Oh, my God, Rhoda. Your divorce is final? Mm, yeah, here's the paper. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, love. You could look at me. I mean, I'm fine. I, I, I knew, you know, already that the divorce was final. It's just that seeing it in black and white. Oh, you know? Roll, if you want to cry, it's okay. Go ahead. I don't feel like crying. <laughs> what do you feel? I feel... I feel like, uh, hitting. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay, Roll. <clears throat> Go ahead. Take your best. <laughs> I see, I, not hitting a person, you, I mean, uh, you know, things. Yeah? Yes. I think that's a good idea, Rhoda. No, Brenda, I really, it's, 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 I feel silly. No, I think really? it would be good for you. Do I you, really do. You yeah. do? Here, here, go ahead, demolish this. <laughs> Rhoda, move. Come on. <laughs> Come on, hit it hard, Ro. Really hit it hard. Come on. Harder. Harder. Make a fist and really punch it. Yeah. Fist. Hit it, Rhoda. Come on. Get it out! Get me out of that pillow! Really? Get it out of here! You know something? I'm just sick of all these pillows. Yeah. They're all terrible. I never like this fabric. This ball bolster stinks. This no. little thing doesn't even right. keep that little rock. Out of here. It's terrible. I'm tired of it all. You know right. that, Brenda? Yeah. And these? What are these papers? Papers. I do not read them. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
God. I can just see the headlines. Two sisters strangled by beats. <laughs> oh. Okay, and now once again, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Valerie Harper with the Claude Hoppers. A wrong way to play it Nobody does it like me If there's a wrong way to do it A right way to mess it up <laughs> Nobody does it like me oh. Oh. If there's a wrong way to keep it cool A right way to be a fool Nobody does it like me if there's a wrong bell i ring it a wrong note i sing it nobody does it like me if there's a wrong way to keep a guy right way to lose a guy nobody does it like me nobody does it no nobody does it like a member of the CBS family on Friday, actress Valerie Harper, best known for her role as Rhoda on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, died after a long battle with cancer. It may have been Mary Tyler Moore's show, but it was Valerie Harper who became America's favorite upstairs neighbor. So you're uh, Rhoda Morgenstern, uh, and I'm Mary Richards. Uh, hello. Get out of my apartment. She quickly made Rhoda Morgenstern a household name. She had it all. A frank wit. I don't know why I'm putting this in my mouth. I should just apply it directly to my hips. A kooky wardrobe and a brash New York style that never seemed to offend. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm another person in the room. <laughs> my name is Rhoda Morgenstern. The role earned Harper four Emmys and a Golden Globe, plus a slot in TV history. Hey, taxi! Hey! Hey, taxi! Hey! When Rhoda finally got married on her own spin-off show, the episode became a TV event, one of the highest rated of its time. By the authority vested in me by the state of New York, I now pronounce you married. Over the course of her more than 60-year career, Harper was active on Broadway and in the movies, too. I'm Caroline, your regular waitress. Huh. Oh, my turn. <laughs> Sorry. She was working pretty steadily even after 2013 when she announced she had a rare form of brain cancer. Doctors told her back then she only had months to live. I know a lot of you feel like you know me, that you are part of the Morgan Stern family, and I feel I know you too. And so I owe you the truth at the same time with everybody else. She went on an episode of The Doctors, where she explained living with the knowledge of death was actually a great gift. More than anything, I'm living in the moment. I really want Americans and all of us to be less afraid of death and know that it's a, a passage, but that don't go to the funeral before the day of the funeral. She made it to 80, the same age Mary Tyler Moore was when she died in 2017. Their friend and co-star, Ed Asner, who's nearly 90 himself, said of Harper on Twitter, her brilliance burst through and shined its light upon all of us. Good night, beautiful, he said. I'll see you soon. 